Hello and welcome. This is Sandra Hess, founder of DTC Wine Workshops, here to record our next in the series of the DTC Wine Case Studies. I have the pleasure of sitting here in a beautiful, iconic Napa Valley, the day after Mother's Day here in May, at the wonderful Minor Family Wines. And so I'm going to go ahead and get started today with introductions as we cover a DTC case study on the true ROI of a family wine brand partnering with a family logistics company. Um, so I'm Layla Subai. <clears throat> I'm the D director of DTC operations for Minor Family Winery. I've been at Minor. I'm coming up on my six year anniversary here this summer in July. Um, I've been in the wine industry for about 15 years total um, and definitely uh, have very much enjoyed my time here, which is why. Um, Miner uh, was founded in 1999 by Dave Miner and his late wife, Emily. Um, they uh, began producing wines and opened the doors here in the year 2000. We are open to the public. We do take walk-in traffic still, which is a bit uncommon amongst our neighbors here in Oakville. Um, we are known for our flagship wine, the Oracle, and also our Wild East Chardonnay, very widely available in wholesale. Um, but we are about 50-50 DTC and wholesale at this point. Um, so our DTC sales channels include uh, the tasting room, events, e-commerce and our wine club channel um, and events comprise both uh, on-site and off-site for us so well thank you they last year Dave, and so Dave Debro is the VP of Business Development for Copper Peak Logistics based out of American Canyon with offices also now in Missouri. Getting right into the true ROI of partnering with a group like Copper Peak Logistics, Layla. I'd like to start with you in today's case study. Can you help us, um, or help the audience rather, better understand um, why Minor Family Wines selected Copper Peak Logistics as a strategic partner? Absolutely, so um, we vetted several different fulfillment options uh, before ultimately choosing to go with Copper Peak. Um, Throughout my time in the industry, I've worked with several different warehouses. They're all very good um, at, at certain things. Um, but for us um, and for our brand, um, that word family really does mean a lot to us. Um, and Dave Miner, for a very long time, um, in-house fulfillment was really important to him. Um, but as our brand grew and as our subscription channel through the wine club grew, we really realized that we could not deliver the customer experience and the level of customer service that our customers deserve. Um, by continuing to do it in-house. So that's really what started our search for outside fulfillment. Um, and then as far as our choice uh, in choosing Copper Peak, we chose Copper Peak because um, we felt like they really wanted to do business with us. Um, I would say that's probably the number one reason we made that choice. Um, they made it very clear that they didn't want to be a vendor to us. They wanted to be a business partner, a strategic business partner. Um, and as a wine club manager at that time, for me, that meant everything. Um, I needed somebody to help kind of lighten my load in that way, somebody that I could trust, somebody that was thorough, and somebody that was communicative. Um, and we found all of that um, through Copper Peak, where we didn't feel uh, some of the other options we looked at that are, um, you know, uh, what's the right term? Small fish in a big pond. Sure. Um, and we wanted to, not that we're the biggest fish in your pond, um, but we like Copper Peak because we think they make every winery feel like the biggest fish in the pond, whether they really are or are not. Thank you. And so how long has uh, Minor Family Wines been working with Copper Peak Logistics? So in 2015, we did a beta with just our club services. Um, so we started sending the wine club all throughout the year of 2015 through Copper Peak. We were really impressed with um, the turnaround time, um, as well as the way they were communicating with us about any delays, if there were any, um, or even sometimes saying, hey, we can actually get these out on Monday instead of Tuesday. Would that be OK with you? Um, so of course, absolutely. Um, so we, after the initial trial run in 2015, we took our dailies uh, over to Copper Peak as well in 2016. We've been with them ever since. Great. And great words of wisdom also. It sounded like, you know, you being able to go in as a beta client and really test things out first yes. before putting all of your eggs in the basket. Exactly. And that was that's another thing I'll say is Copper Peak was willing to work with us on that um, because we weren't sure. Like I said, it was really important to Dave. Um, that's part of 
uh, the family atmosphere that he felt around here it was something that we took a lot of pride in was in-house fulfillment. Um, and so really working with Copper Peak, it still feels like in-house fulfillment because we do truly feel like they are a partner and not just this person we write a check to every month. Well, uh, first of all, I'd have to say the type of customer we're supporting is the family brand one. Mm -hmm. And they could have a small amount of DTC business or a large amount of DTC business. Collaboratively, we work together with these prospects to find the right fit. Mm -hmm. And we'll be honest, you know, if, if, we, if we can't do it, we can't. I mean, we had somebody come to us last summer who had a massive amount of volume. And we said, thanks so much, good luck. We're not the right fit for you. And they were shocked. Because mm -hmm. uh, the last thing we want to have happen is somebody like, let me pick up the phone and say, what happened to your service levels? Absolutely. It's not okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, we remember where we came from and where we're going. And we, we don't overgrow. We are very strategic about how many accounts we bring on board each year. And so we don't want to get the call from Bela or, or from any of our other clients, you know, mentioning that we lost our service level. So we're controlling our growth. We don't overpromise and under deliver. We under promise and over deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, strategically, we service just the Napa and Sonoma Valleys. Uh, however, we do have some and uh, nationally as well. Milton Cornwell, our COO and co-founder of the company, he manages our business from St. Louis at our operational public stage facility okay. there. And so we have other wineries in other parts of the countries that we serve from there as well. Excellent. So some flexibility with that forward staging out of Missouri. Um, and you touched on something earlier, um, Layla, about the ability to work with Copper Peak, you know, in this family, you know, based, um, you know, scenario. I think that when you talk about the types of brands that you support with this white glove service, um, explain to us, you know, at what point does it make sense for a winery to look at Copper Peak? You know, they've been in, they've been, they're filling in house, they're starting to kind of burst at the seams, customers might even be complaining that they can't get the turnaround times they want. So around what volume, what size does it make sense? Well, I, I think Layla said it best, and, and it comes down to what type of consumer experience you want to establish with your client. Mm -hmm. and at, at the end of the day, the consumer delivery experience is everything mm -hmm. today. I mean, literally, from the packaging that you use to the turnaround time. I mean, we're chasing Amazon, right? And obviously, but uh, uh, Alexa, they want Alexa yes. today. They want Alexa <laughs> today. <laughs> so, so true. So our industry is an onslaught of people that want their delivery experience faster and faster mm -hmm. and faster. But yet we have to remember, this is alcohol, it's highly regulated, highly breakable, it's in a bottle, yes. highly perishable, heat, and either heat or, or cold can damage the product. It's a one and done vintage. So, so you know, Layla talked about something earlier, Dave, and that is, you know, they were at a place of self-fulfilling, you know, kind of bursting at the seams, it's time to really, you know, improve, turn around time, really meet consumer demand, and so it was time for them to, to partner with Copper Peak. Can you share with us when it makes sense for brands? Is there, is there a certain quantity of wine they're producing, a certain amount of shipments every year that they're sending out? It's a great question. And, and each one is going to look at it differently, and, and especially not just from the wine club manager's perspective, but all the way up through the leadership change, uh, through the leadership itself. Sure. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone wants fast and, and fast and free delivery on the consumer, consumers. Uh, <laughs> So, so there, there are some wineries that, you know, they may ship, you know, 2,000 shipments a year or mm -hmm. 1,500 shipments a year. And there's other wineries that, you know, we, we turn somebody down that ships 40,000 shipments a year because it wasn't the right fit. So in the end, you know, it's what's really best for the brand mm -hmm. to deliver the experience they're looking for. Unfortunately, there's no set number. Okay. Uh, but, you know, the way I look at it is that if somebody can't ship, uh, you know, 20 boxes a week on average, maybe maybe 40 on average, 20 to 40 somewhere in there per week. Uh, obviously, with the club, you, you know, you're doing sure. well with that. But yeah, I don't know what, 1,500 shipments annually? Okay. Uh, it may be outs outsourcing fulfillment doesn't make sense. However, even if you have less than that, there are certain circumstances where you want the people in your shipping department to be doing other things like helping to sell more wine versus mm -hmm. packaging packages. Mm -hmm. So it's not a set answer, unfortunately. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, every winery is different. Well, I think it's a good answer. It's an important answer, and that is, you know, really looking at the solution as a customized um, solution to truly partner and work strategically. Well, and I can tell you that for us, the, the real the real turning point here at Meyer, um, I, I remember it very clearly. It was our August 2014 shipment, um, and I looked downstairs we've got these big windows that look into our cellar um and i looked downstairs and i saw hundreds probably thousands of packages honestly sitting um and i knew that i had billed them 
10 days prior. Right. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, there aren't labels on all of those boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, this is still, we're still days out on moving sure. everything out of that warehouse. Something has sure. to change. What is it going to be? Yeah. So um, is it bringing in temps? Well, no, those people don't know our wine. They don't know um, the differences in the labels, mm -hmm. Gary's Pinot versus the Rosella's mm -hmm. Pinot. Um, so a temp crew wasn't the answer for us. Really the answer for us was finding a long-term partner that could service our needs. So wonderful. Well, thank you thank for you. that piece. I think it's an important aspect when we're looking at true ROI of why to outsource, why to partner in this particular way. And so let's get into consumer demand and what we're looking at today. Like you mentioned earlier, we want it fast, we want it free. My husband <laughs> and I, we've been Amazon Prime members now for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, we are spoiled. Rate, they? Yeah, well, they just did. <laughs> and, uh, but you know what? We're okay with it because we love them. And we get our second day. And you get the value from there the service. There you go. Yeah. And so you know what? You get the value from the service. It's consistent, <laughs> that they're reliable, they take ownership if something right. does go wrong, right? And so let's take that into the consumer mindset today. Two to three day turnaround times. That's really where we're at. We don't, and you know, yes, wine is hard to ship. Yes, wine is fragile. Temperature control issues. We heard it all. We know the drill, right? They consumers don't care. don't care. So let's talk about Layla from your perspective. Yeah. How is consumer demand changing what you do, how you work with Copper Peak to sure. meet them in a way, meet them where they're at? Sure. So I definitely feel that the onus of that falls on us, mm -hmm. the winery. Um, it is all about communication with our customers. It's all about communication with the warehouse. So it is up to us to educate the customer on why this is not their Amazon Prime shipment. Right. Um, it is up to us to let them know um, all of the wonderful things that us using a service like Copper Peak provides them. Your wine is in a temperature controlled warehouse waiting to leave. Um, your wine is gonna be coming in packaging that we feel secure is going to arrive to you safely with bottles not broken. Um, so we won't have to reship to you. Mm. Um, we, you know, there are a variety of reasons why, um, you know, taking that few extra days is worth it to yes. me in my yes. mind. You know, we can service the West Coast um, in two to three days, which is fantastic. Um, and Copper Peak does have the opportunity uh, with that forward staging in St. Louis for us to be getting two to three day delivery time all over the country. Sure. We ourselves have not adopted that forward staging yet. We hope to by the end of this year. Excellent. Um, because not only do we see value in it for the consumer mm -hmm. and the delivery time, um, we see value in it for us in terms of monetary, right? Um, by us sending everything to zone two and zone three, that's really saving us a lot of money. Sure. We do. And we really do, um, I think we do a really good job of communicating that to the customer mm -hmm. because we obviously get complaints just like anybody else where I wanted, I ordered yesterday at three for overnight delivery. My package didn't show up yes. today. Um, well, yesterday at three, uh, you had already missed our cutoff for overnight shipping. Um, but if that does happen to us, we have somebody monitoring those online orders all the time and they will call that customer and say, overnight shipping, we can absolutely do it for you, but it's not gonna arrive tomorrow, it's going to be Thursday. Wow, so a call is being made. Absolutely. Wow. Um, we call and we email because some, like, I don't pick up my phone if I don't know the number, <laughs> um, but I will check an email. Um, and then I might go back and say, oh, they said in the email they called me. I wonder if there's more detail in that message. And then I can go back. So we do a double touch, um, but we do a lot of extra touching here because that is, again, um, communicating with the customer. That is how we are able to provide the consumer experience we do. And Copper Peak does the same for us. So. I want to tell you that I've done a lot of data analysis on their specific account reviews for all of our prospects and accounts. And we looked at their shipping volume and, and, their, and their days in transit. And from shipping from Napa Valley, they average three point eight business days to markets, and that's pretty much predominantly straight across the board, no matter how big or small a winery is, for the most part, um, unless they have a high concentration of East Coast customers. But by moving to our St. Louis facility, I've proven that we can get them to one point nine days to market. Wonderful. And so, with us all chasing Amazon Prime, as you say, it's it's really imperative to get the right wine in the right box to the right customer yes. every time That's because right. at the end of the day they're going to get the phone call so for us um one thing that we were not able to do on our own um because we had software constraints at that time um was send an automated message to our customer letting them know the package shipped um, when I first started here, one of the, the they knew their wine club shipment was coming because they were getting their FedEx notification. So that means that their card had already been charged and their wine had already been sent to fulfillment. And not only had it been sent to fulfillment, it had been picked up and was on the way to their house. Mm -hmm. um, we were losing a lot of members that way. That is a great way to lose a 
life of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, what not to do. What not to do. Um, so we definitely tweaked the way that we do uh, our business in that way. Um, and one of the greatest things about going online with Popper Peak is they are sending um, a branded message. It has our logo, our look and feel, our HTML colors. Um, we provide them all this information, a little blurb that goes at the bottom of the messaging um, that's specific to our brand that automatically goes out to the customer as soon as their package is picked up by the carrier. Um, and for us, it's been a, huge, a tremendous difference. Um, you know, it's so much more personal than a FedEx tracking, you know, your FedEx package has been sent. Um, it's so much more personal. And yes, they do follow a link in that email to the FedEx page, but they know it's from us. They're not just clicking on a FedEx link thinking, is this my Amazon package? Is this my package sure. from, uh, from Sephora? Right. Or is this my package of minor one? Right. So um, that to me speaks again to the customer experience. And really that is a huge focus of what we do here is really all about the customer experience. Mm -hmm. um, we're all making wine. We all have a wine club. There is nothing unique about what any of us are doing in that sense. So really what sets us apart is how we make people feel part of the family. Um, and so I love that, that we are able to, to have that as something that is just like, it just happens and it happens for us. We didn't even have to do it. I send their team HTML colors, a little message. They send me back a proof of a beautiful email. Um, it really, it's such a wonderful service. Another way in which Copper Peak Logistics is offering white glove solutions to family owned wineries. Let's talk about other options. I, I've got to jump on this yes. because, you know, Layla and, and the Meyer family brand are family mm -hmm. and so is CPL and they do something here that's so unique and, and I never heard of it before. When someone is about to have a child, uh, they usually suspend their club. Membership. A lot of times they'll yeah put it on hold. They'll tell us something like, well, I won't be able to drink. So my husband can still drink. So, so, <laughs> he needs wine yes, more than ever. Layla created this uh, this onesie for infants or newborns. Yeah. And so you know she sends it out to her customers and and they take pictures and uh, the family photos with the, the minor ones because it's minor family That's brand. Right. And you know, we post it on social, their friends, they, the moms or dads share it on their social with their followers that want our followers before it's really a chain reaction. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that right, by working with Copper Peak that we are able to do, um, we are able to free up the time in our shipping department to get, you know, 10 onesies out in a week, Wonderful. um, instead of shipping wine, because that's what they're good at. And we want to be good at the feel, the good feels. <laughs> Wonderful. I love that story. And something else that we do, uh, that they've used in the past where, you know, we don't just do wine we can actually do wine and food or mm -hmm. it's limitations for them. We don't do any refrigerated food. <laughs> but, um, but we are FSMA approved for um, you know, dry goods, so right. we might do wine and chocolate, uh, or we might do wine and merchandise. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, for example, if you want to ship ball caps or or corkscrews or glassware along with your wine shipment, that's what we do. We have the software capabilities to handle wine lock code and expiration and and deliver a consumer experience. Because right now, it's all about consumer experience and creating more value and retention. Uh, from a winery's perspective and the fulfillment center that could actually deliver on that promise to their customers. Help well, you grow your brand. And my favorite story about that, we sent a power bank, a 20,000 mega amp power bank, um, as a Christmas gift to our Case Club members uh, two years ago. Um, and I thought, we're just going to get these power banks and they're flat and they'll throw them in the shipment and this is not going to be a problem and we're going to upgrade these people to second day air for the holidays. It's going to be wonderful. Well. I send the batteries down and I say, we're going to upgrade to second day air shipping and you need to just stick this in the package, even though they were a little taller than I thought they were going to be. Um, and they came back and said, well, Layla, we can do this. We can do this, but you cannot ship your battery second day air. We don't airship lithium ion batteries. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, and you're your packaging doesn't fit. <laughs> so we are going to give us give us a day and let us figure this out. Um, so by the next day, we had taken a prototype, they cut a little thing in their regular packaging, they made these batteries fit, um, and they figured out how to, uh, we did, I think we did three day select. Yeah, so I think we did three day select to get the packages to the East Coast on the timeline that we wanted. It wasn't air, but it was still sure. traveling quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are the types of things mm -hmm. that I don't feel that we, maybe we could have gotten that service elsewhere, but we're, you know, we're not a huge winery, right? We make sure. only like 25, 35,000 cases. So, so, well, <laughs> so it's important to us to know that they will 
help us kind of come up with the solutions that we haven't thought of on our own. You know, we're going to talk about ROI in just a bit, but you've already touched on a really important return on investment point in selecting Copper Peak, and that is strategic partnering. It's like under promising, over delivering, delivering on our promises, and at the end, and controlling our growth. And and in the end, you know, we never want to be the biggest. I know this sounds it's not technological. It is just flat out. We just don't want to be the biggest. Mm -hmm. We we never want to. Get, I want to see later at the market and be good. Sure. Uh, I, I, I want you know <laughs> our other clients to. Uh, when I walk in the door and help them upload their cold chain uh, or tell them about the UPS summer solution or talk about GSO or FedEx, whatever. I want it to be a good open yes. communication. Absolutely. Uh, Great. He's going to go customer. downstairs right after this and update all of our cold chain tools for us. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Yeah. This is the VP, right? And he is here on site and he's going to go down and update everybody's computer. So, uh, it's nice. the right thing to do. <laughs> Um, so, in, so in the end, we just we want to do the right thing, and we want to keep our uh, customers raving fans. Well, it sounds like you're nailing it, and uh, you know, the industry buzz is that Copper Peak cares. Copper Peak Logistics is a partner that is there for the long run, and to really help family-owned wineries um, meet consumers where they are today. Now we're getting into the fun part of the case study, <laughs> the ROI, dot, dot, dot. Dun, what is dun, the dun. true return on investment partnering with Copper Peak? I would say most importantly for us in the soft costs, right? So um, packaging costs have gone down, which is great. Um, labor costs in that department have gone down, which is great. But the other things that we have really seen improve are um, our customer service team. They are spending so much less time dealing with people on the phone that are upset. Where is my wine? I didn't get tracking information. Where is this? Where is that? Um, so we've really seen that be a, a huge factor for us. Um, Another factor is um, the packaging itself. We were using wonderful packaging, um, but we have had far less breakage and spoilage <laughs> um, using coming from this temperature controlled warehouse. Our warehouse, yes. um, the return system, uh, they, uh, the returns portal, so it's customer facing. I can go in and we can have our team working on returns. It's not a spreadsheet that we're getting that someone has to comb through. It's actionable reship or return to inventory, click of a button. Sure. So all of those things, I think for us, have really been where the ROI is, is on our workflow. It has tremendously impacted our workflow in the positive um, to have taken on a partner like Copper Peak. Right. Um, Layla's talking specifically about our, <clears throat> about our Copper Link uh, client interface, mm -hmm. and it gives you real-time inventory visibility uh, when you're low stock uh, on an item, it sends you low stock notifications. Uh, it sends email notifications to the consumer, as she said earlier, with the branded logo and marketing message uh, and color schemes. And it also does a lot of my reporting. Really? So that's the thing is that, again, for my workflow, it's taken out a whole aspect of reporting. These are reports that I can automatically generate in Copper Link. I love Copper Link. Copper um, Link? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Copper, 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 Link. Copper Link is a great, great feature for me as, yes. the, as the shipper. Uh, you know, you'll get into things where a customer will want to reroute a package. They can because they say, well, I'm not the shipper. Mm -hmm. um, even though Copper Peak is the shipper, I can still reroute all of my packages for the consumer. Wonderful. I don't have to wait for somebody on their team to reroute the package for me. Real-time control. Real-time real -time control. Access. So for us, the return on the investment in this process has really been, and like I said, all of these extra soft costs. Um, and something in freeing up our shipping department and our shipping team that we've been able to do just this quarter, I don't even know if you know this yet, is we have somebody now watching the ship compliant notifications and calling after the first delivery attempt. Uh, Love that. Because we really don't want that line back. So huge. <laughs> not relying on the automated text message or the exactly. email from UPS. It's all about that it's personal line. Yes. Family. Wow. So we're a very personal brand, and we feel that Copper Peak is a very personal brand. And for us, that is why um, this is kind of like a match made in heaven. Match made in heaven. <laughs> Can you share with us what this has meant also for increasing sales? I mean, we want to get down into the talk soft, you know, ROI. Yeah, absolutely. But what does it mean financially? Sure. So um, our club sales have increased 29%. Um, 29%. 29%. So we're keeping club members longer than we ever were. Um, we've made it very, Copper Peak has made it very easy for us to offer um, members to 
add on to their shipments. Right. Um, they handle that really well with how those orders flow into their system, dailies versus club. Mm -hmm. um, so that has been huge for us. Um, and then e-commerce as well. We're able to service those e-commerce orders faster than we were ever able to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are seeing a huge uptick in customers who have, we look in their account, they have never visited this winery. They created their account online um, and they are purchasing and then they're coming back and purchasing again and coming back and purchasing again because the whole experience for them is so easy. Streamlined. Streamlined. And it's you're the same experience that your customers are having here. Yes. They're getting in between visits. Well, you, you described exactly. today what Copper Peak can do as a logistics partner. Yes. Really coming in working strategic and real time with you to yes. make adjustments, get yeah. creative. If something doesn't fit in a box, you know what? We're going to make it We're going to make it happen. That part. Yeah. <laughs> Talking also about ROI, we always look at customer satisfaction. And I think you nailed it on the head today in this case study. As we wrap up, 29% growth in club sales uh, the last three years since using Copper Peak Logistics. But the biggest takeaway for me in this ROI study is how Minor Family Wines has partnered successfully to drive customer engagement and yes. engagement success and so because that's what it's all you. about right we have yes. to keep them like you said what makes us different than our neighbor um and what makes us different than our neighbor is we're constantly trying to find something that adds value to their experience mm -hmm. it's not just wine anymore so mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's, you know they're a customer yes. and we come from the customer service industry and you know and hospitality it's the wine business and it's special and it matters and so when they pick up the phone and call us, we answer. At the end of the day, 5.5 million cases of wine shipped last year direct to consumer throughout the U.S. And we're not, we're not, they're not going anywhere. And nope. so as a matter of fact, <laughs> they're going to want more with these type of customer uh, touch points and opportunities to receive wine two to three days. And so as we can conclude today's DTC wine case study featuring Minor Family Wines and Copper Peak Logistics, I encourage you to check out what these two fine family-run businesses are doing here in iconic Napa Valley. And also connect with DTC Wine Workshops by signing up for our blog and case study series news. Cheers.